Welcome back to Cooking with Carol Diane. I cleaned up the kitchen from making my ambrosia salad a few minutes ago, and now I'm on to the dessert for um, Easter, what I'm going to have, which is called Grandma's Coconut Cake. And normally I make a lane cake on Easter, I really do. Um, a lane cake is layered inside, the filling inside is candied red cherries and raisins and a bourbon flavoring, and it's quite tasty, it really is. But today I just decided to do it simple because of my granddaughter, and uh, there's going to be enough sweets, I think. So, um, uh, very easy little cake recipe that we're going to do today. I am putting a seven minute frosting on this cake, and then I will be decorating it for Easter. So um, stay tuned for all of that. I'll just kind of be breaking up my videos um, and then incorporating them together to show you start to finish. So let's begin like you do with everything when you're making a cake. And this one calls for one cup of unsalted butter. Now, when you go to the store to buy butter, you get it uh, two ways. One that says unsalted and one that's salted. I buy Land Lakes. that's kind of what's in my grocery store. And the green one will say salted on it. The blue paper inside these will be the unsalted. And that's what you need. Because we will be adding salt to this recipe. We don't need it in the butter. So one cup, which is four of the little sticks of the butter. So we'll add those into the mixer. And then it calls for... Um, two cups of just regular sugar, household sugar. Add that in. And then of course, I turn on this mixer and get that going. I let my um, butter sit out at room temperature for a little while this morning. Also my eggs um, works better on a cake when you do that. My oven is preheated to 350. And this cake's going to take anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes to bake. I'm doing this today, Saturday, the day before Easter, so that I have it all done. Don't have to worry about this for tomorrow. Okay, that's blended pretty good. Now we're going to take the um, five eggs, one at a time. necessary on this cake a mix to go with one egg and beat it for a long time and then go with the other and we're just going to go ahead and put these in it's going to get mixed up real well i'm trying to show um, the young people that you don't always have to just go to the store and buy a cake mix um, to bake a cake it's not really that hard to bake a cake doesn't take that many ingredients. Okay, that is the um, eggs now that are in there. Now we need some flavoring. So we're gonna take some vanilla extract, one teaspoon. Again, I'm using the Madagascar. You can use whatever flavoring that you like as far as vanilla flavoring. This one just gives a pretty good taste, it really does. But you may have one that you prefer. extract. They'll come in boxes like this, or they may just come on the counter like this. But it's a coconut flavoring with what we're after inside. One teaspoon of that. Okay, and that's mixed it. And then in a dry mixing bowl, um, is where I like to take the dry ingredients. So you're gonna need, um, this is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Pour that in a bowl. And then it is one teaspoon of baking soda. I have my, I, I put mine in my cute little vintage jar <laughs> so that I can find it easily in my cupboard. 
So one teaspoon of the baking soda. And one teaspoon of baking powder. Whichever brand that you have of baking powder will work just fine. Level teaspoon of the baking powder. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. So here's where our salt comes in that we're going to take and put it in the dry ingredients now, which isn't very much, but if you had added that plus salt that's already in your butter, that'd be quite a bit of salt for this particular recipe and we don't need that much. And then I like to just kind of whisk that around and make sure all the dry ingredients are in there nice. So we're gonna do that. Get that all incorporated. Okay, so um, we've gotten that far and now we're gonna go ahead and turn the mixer back on and add the flour mixture. stick spraying um, whatever you have Baker's Joy or um, I've used Crisco oil I've used a lot of things to um, get the pan prepared and then you dust it with flour and again this goes in a um, 350 degree pan or oven for about 25 to 30 minutes Depending, you need to always check um, whatever you have in the oven that you're cooking, you know, just kind of keep an eye on it. So I will be definitely looking at it at the 25 minute mark and seeing how it looks. As long as it comes out clean when you're doing the cake test, whether you're using a toothpick or a knife to check it. Once these have cooled from being baked, then I will uh, come back on and show you um, how we're going to assemble it, how I'm going to make the seven minute frosting, which was a frosting that my mother used all the time. She really did, but you have to cook this frosting. Yes, for seven minutes, you have to cook it. And it comes out really, um, <laughs> A very good tasting frosting, it really does. Okay, so I'm going to keep going here with hopefully three pans. I'm not just sure yet what it's going to do. I'm going to try to get three um, different cake pans filled with this. And then I will come right back um, after it has cooked in the oven for the 25-30 minutes and uh, show you the rest of it. Be right back. I'm back to show you how to prepare the seven minute frosting. So a couple things that you'll need. You'll need a double broiler. That's this pan right here, which is a pan that has water in it that is gonna be boiling and another pan that you're gonna be putting all of your ingredients in this. 
If you don't have one of these, you can take any type of a saucepan and put a glass Pyrex um, dish on top of it and it'll do the same thing. But today I do have a double, double boiler. So the first thing we're going to need is two egg whites. Let's see here, I have to look over my recipe to make sure, yes, two egg whites. So I'm just gonna crack the egg. Maybe. <laughs> this one didn't wanna do as well as I wanted it to. Crack and get the egg white out of there. Yep, I had a little issue with that one. One little shell in there that we don't need. There we go. don't need to um, stir it up just plop those in there and then you're going to need uh, one and a half cups of regular sugar that you're putting in there a third of a cup of water and it calls for um, one, one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar whisk this up and just get it mixed together but we are going to beat this with an electric pan beater so I've got it where it's mixed up in here I'm going to beat this for seven to ten minutes with my electric uh, beater right here until it foams, forms kind of a peak and then I'm gonna take it off the stove and I'm gonna add one uh, teaspoon of vanilla and I'm gonna beat that then until it's very thick. So I'll begin with the beating of this. You're gonna need a, a, a mixer with um, power to it. Mixing this. Seven to 10 minutes. The reason why they call it a seven minute uh, frosting is it normally only takes seven minutes, but it kind of depends on in your kitchen. Like everything that you make or cook, you know, it's trial or error. So I haven't made this since I was in junior high. I used to watch my mom stand at the stove and make this frosting. And uh, I like it, it has a good good flavor to it because of the egg whites. It really does. Real good flavor. Basically that's all you do. The ingredients are two egg whites, one and one half cups of regular sugar, a third of a cup of water, quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. When this starts to get to form for the peak of the frosting, then I will take it off of the heat and add one teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm going to break away until this gets ready and then I'll be back to show you the frosting. So hang on. I'm back. I have cooked my seven minute frosting which came out just fine. It looks like this, real nice, real fluffy. This is a frosting that um, if you like um, marshmallow cream, it's gonna taste very much like that, it really is. The cakes are out of the oven. I'm gonna put them on here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna immediately put some of this frosting on here. going. I always liked this frosting when my mom made it because um, it has a very, very different flavor to it. Like I said, if you like the marshmallow cream, 
Uh, it's great. Then I took the coconut and I just put it in a bowl and we're just going to start sprinkling the coconut in the middle. Now we'll add the second cake. Top. And again, we're going to put frosting all over it. All, all over it. It says, the, the recipe says that it um, makes about five to six cups of frosting. I didn't measure it out. It's still in my bowl, so I didn't measure that part out. Two. We had a sonic boom happen right when I was trying to cook my cakes. So, uh... They did not come out as nice as what I would have liked for them to, but I can't control <laughs> with the sonic booms at all. Not at all. Okay. All right, so for this particular cake, most of the time I do a two layer cake. So what I'm gonna do is stop my video here and I'm gonna make some more so that I have plenty to go all the way on the sides of my cake. Because it's just not enough to do the three layer. If I was doing probably a two layer, it probably would have been just fine but I'm gonna go ahead and make just a little bit more and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back again. I made just a little bit more of the frosting because I didn't feel that that was going to be enough for this three layered cake. Uh, like I said, if I had used just two layers, I think it would have come out just fine. But you want a generous amount of frosting all over your cake. And uh, that's kind of what I was after, is to make sure that I get a whole bunch of this frosting all over this cake. You don't have to uh, have it come out real fancy on the cake on the sides because I'm going to be putting coconut all on this, all the way around. And I just want to make sure that I get enough of the frosting. And I'm covering my cake well. I've made these a lot. Like I said, I, I usually make a laying cake where I have a more of a filling inside the cake. And, uh, but I still like to use this seven minute frosting because of the flavor. And Easter's kind of about candy, isn't it, with kids? They like all that marshmallow peeps candy and chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate on different things. I like chocolate, but in moderation. Um, and I like a white chocolate a lot better than just a dark chocolate or milk chocolate. I like uh, white chocolate. Kind of funny on things like that. The jelly beans, I have always been partial to um, popcorn jelly beans. I like the flavor. It's a, it's a required taste, it really is. Not everybody likes it, but I do. I like those and I like um, the black jelly beans, which are the licorice. I really like them. They're awfully good. Okay, so if you can kind of see here, I've coated most of the cake. You can add a lot more on top. I put a little bit of uh, coconut up there for what I am doing uh, with the coconut. 
But on this, it's a matter of getting the coconut to stick to the sides and you just wanna kinda of come along. Yes, you'll make a mess and that's why I put it in a bowl that you're making all this coconut. In fact, I think I'll take that off. Did you just wanna coat your cake all the way around with coconut. All the way. Then you can go back, you see, and take this off. There's going to be some up here. Lots up here. Wherever you didn't get, go back and put some coconut on it. And then just kind of clean up your sides here. Clean up those sides. And then... there that didn't get you're still going to use the coconut but now I'm gonna take some and just a little bit more here and I'm going to put it in a ziploc bag and I'm gonna get some food coloring out we're gonna make some grass. So I'm gonna take probably about three squirts, three little droplets of the green food coloring. And then we're just gonna kind of shake this up in here, get it all worked in to get this green grass going. Kind of help it along a little bit. I wouldn't recommend putting it in a food processor and doing it because that would chop up your coconut even more and you don't want that. You want your coconut to uh, stay with the long grains so that it looks like grass. Okay. Then you can put that back in your bowl. And whatever you feel like you didn't get mixed up you know, in there. Grass is grass, you know, you've got lighter shades, you've got dark shades of grass, and that's kind of what we want. Get some that didn't get mixed up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little bit of it and I'm gonna put on the top, to form around here. Put more on the top. So I'm making kind of a hollow area here. And then if you'd like, I usually take some and I put on the bottom. I just kind of decorate the bottom with the green because that's what I like. All the way around your cake. All the way around. that way and then on top we're not finished yet you can take a bunny and put on top right here or I had these eggs I thought maybe I would just use the eggs this year of uh, sitting the eggs on top I said, you can put the bunny. In fact, maybe I will stick him in there too. Put him in there. And then the little um, uh, robin eggs of the candy. Uh, you can always stick that along the sides here. You can put some more of these in. That You know, they've had lots of these little guys. Get some more color in there. They just kind of sit in there <laughs> for a very decorative little cake and a yummy cake. This isn't just a store-bought cake. This is a cake that we have baked from scratch 
and um, apologize for the sonic boom of making it not come out the way I really wanted it to, but like I said, I can't do anything about what goes on outside my window. But that's going to be very festive and nice for Easter using my seven minute cooked frosting. And it's not hard to do at all, it really isn't. And it did take mine exactly the seven minutes, it really did. Um, I was timing it with my timer and it was seven minutes on there. And uh, so that's my cake. And I'm going to have a wonderful Easter this year of my ham, scallop potatoes, my ambrosia salad, and my nice coconut cake. And I hope you have um, a nice Easter with your family or friends, whoever comes over, whoever you're um, able to be with. Um, this year at my table, I think it's only going to be three, but you know, I'm thankful for that because it um, could be just me sitting down there eating this all by myself. <laughs> Um, so I want you to have a great afternoon, and this is from my kitchen to yours, Cooking with Carol Diane. Happy Easter.